indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome. I will call this County Council meeting Wednesday, February 20th, to order on five of my council colleagues are here. Ron is ill and not with us. So we will try to forge ahead in his absence. First on the agenda, um, Lauren Adley of Perkins and Adley Law Firm is here to talk to us about an abatement. Thank you, Phil. You're welcome. So I have Marvin Raymer with me. We are here on behalf of Raymer Properties and Land Co Builder and Supply to ask for your approval of the tax abatement. As you know, Marvin operates a successful business north of town on Old U.S. Highway 31. And I'm gonna let um, him answer any questions that you may have after I give you a brief summary of the tax abatement that we're asking for. Ramco currently employs about 104 employees. With the proposed expansion and new machinery, they expect to hire an additional five to seven employees yearly over this abatement. Um, that would be at competitive wages and benefits. Right now, their wages are averaging about $45,000 a year um, for the employees that they have, and their benefits include health, vision, dental, and life insurance options, simple IRA matching, vacation time, paid holidays, and employee discounts. The expansion of the manufacturing footprint is expected to cost about 1.9 million and the new machinery is an additional 1.2 million. Um, the reason for the expansion is probably my favorite part of the request. Um, this expansion and this equipment is being sought to increase their production without adding a third shift. And so Marvin's always looking out for the best interest of his employees. This way they don't have to start a third shift out there. On the business side of things, Ramco petitioned for a tax abatement in 2021. At that time, the county established the area where Ramco is located as an economic revitalization area. That has not been canceled or rescinded in any way, so it doesn't have to be reestablished. Um, Ramco is still eligible for tax abatements. So we have filed two different statement of benefit forms. One is for the real estate and one is for the personal property. And we are asking for uh, the maximum abatement on each, which would be 10 years for real estate and 10 years for personal property. And so at this time, I would open it up for questions for me or for um, Mr. Raymer, who is here with us. And, and Lauren, so real, by real estate, you mean the building? Correct. Is that correct? The okay. Yes. So, any questions for Lauren? So that economic development area, that kind of tip thing? We no, this is different. Okay. This is different. Curious. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, don't ask me about tip districts. That's not, <laughs> okay, that, that's not you, huh? That's not me. Okay, I just, just wondered how to deal about that. But I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you have any questions for Lauren about the abatement? or the business and the company? I guess I have one. We haven't always given a 10 year, full 10 year abatement on everything. And I think last time we went to a sliding scale or seven years or something of that nature. I don't remember totally what we did on it, but I know we have on different ones. I know we had theirs <laughs> was 10 years. Um, but to do 10 years on both is a pretty hard hit on the county on loss of taxes. When things depreciate, then there's still nothing there when they get done for us to have anything coming in after the 10 years even. So I wondered if they might be open to more of an idea of if others would consider more of like a seven years on maybe the personal property or something of that nature. So, so Laura, you want to talk about the personal property abatement first? Yeah, and let's do. In a number of years? Yeah, let's do. If, 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 if others are interested in that idea. I okay. uh, Maybe I'm a lone wolf on this, but I know it hurts us in the long run. When we go 10 years, a lot of us may not even be here in 10 years to live with what we've done. So I'd like to discuss it. Okay. So, so the max by law that we could allow is 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so, or, and typically in the past, for other businesses, we can decide what we want to do for this one, but we have given five years for personal property. So let's have some discussion. I think we should talk about what we did. They're one of the 
bigger employers in the county and they keep growing. That's they got good metal too. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, he appreciates the endorsement, don't you? <laughs> and I have nothing against the business. I just know what it does to us tax wise if we start doing everything like that. So you got to think about it. My thoughts on that to some degree is I've always said if we're going to give an abatement, we, we, we want to make sure that they pay uh, a good wage. And my understanding is you guys are paying a good wage, so uh, that that's a consideration to me, very strong consideration. And I also like to see, obviously he's had one before and living up to his end of the bargain uh, when he says he's retaining the number of employees and you know continuing on with what he says he's going to do so i mean i feel like a 10-year abatement wouldn't be on the question either uh, for the personal property yes you're talking yes the 10-year abatement okay and if i could just add to your point chase um, in the last tax abatement that ramco and um that ramco applied for the estimate was the same as this one where they would add five to seven employees per year and um Marvin was at the commissioner's meeting last night and shared that, I mean, it was almost double that they added in that abatement and continue to add every year. The number of employees. Correct. So, so it's much greater than five to 70 a year. Is that it's what you're actually saying? averages around 15 to 17 that they end up adding. Okay. okay. Thank you for that information. I try to appreciate that because uh, uh, it makes me feel like he's Pretty well grounded and, and uh, as I said, former salesman, I always like to over under promise and over deliver, you know. And I feel like that's what what you're doing, and that that scores points with me too. Any other discussion about the personal property tax abatement? It, is, is there a motion? Does anybody want to make a motion on the number of years to award the tax abatement for the personal property? Like motion for 10. Steve made a motion for 10. Randy seconded 10 years tax abatement on the personal property. All those in favor of a 10 year abatement on the personal property, raise your right hand. Oh boy. And we're okay. <clears throat> three to three. I do not know what to do. <laughs> Just like Martin said last night, I mean, this commissioner meeting, he's doing this to keep more jobs in Fulton County and not in his other places. I mean, that's a plus to me. You know, you want to talk yeah, about Yeah, one of the things we've done is, as some of you might know, we have locations in the Allen County and North uh, East Elkhart County and this is one thing this expansion will do for us as well is we have a lot of the machines I mean this is this is our corporate office and we have a lot of the machines here that we don't at those locations and we make a lot of product here for them and we would this expansion will allow us to make more product for those other locations which is bringing the jobs here instead of those counties and I thought that was a significant point. And our point of adding employees, we never know the future. And so I would, I would much rather say five and seven and be able to live up to it than, because I mean, I don't know what the economy is gonna do next year. I think it's gonna be good. And, and, and we're, you know, we, we try to operate very conservatively. And so I think that's a pretty easy target for us based off the last 20 years. We bought that property in 2009 we developed it and moved in there in 2011, I think. Yeah, yeah, March of 2011, and we had 12 employees in March of 2011. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of our growth. And I didn't know how fast it would grow. And we'll be thankful for whatever the county does for us. I mean, whatever you decide, <coughs> we love Fulton County. We like being here, and we're not going to, we're, we're just thankful for whatever the county does for us. It's been a good spot for us to be. Thank you. And you're appreciated. <coughs> okay, I'm going to change my vote. 
and vote in favor of the 10-year abatement, so I'll break the tie. So we'll give the 10-year abatement for the personal property, okay? Now let's talk about the real, real estate, the building, the abatement. And they have requested a 10-year abatement for the building. Let's have a discussion about that. You want to make a motion? A is there any is there any discussion about the number of years of basement for the for the building? You're okay with ten? So does anybody want to make a motion? motion Steve ten on the building. On the building. Steve made a motion for a ten year abatement on the real estate, which is the building. Is there a second? Second. Randy seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. <clears throat> motion carries six zero. Really appreciate that. Yes, we thank you. 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 Thank I sent Christine a copy of this report we put together to everybody. And she it. sent it to all of us. We have it. Okay, and I've got printed ones if anybody would like one. Okay, and I'm happy looking online. So I just thought I could, should come and see if you have any questions or. It's a little confusing that a, a majority of all of our improvements and everything, and grants and all that, are done through the friends. Okay. So. As county council members, you probably don't see any of that. True. So we True. thought that was important to give you a better understanding of what all we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm supposed to do it annually, but I got a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're forgiven. Okay. So we have the um, report in front of us, and thank you. Do you want to point out some highlights for us? Yeah. Um, that first page and that spreadsheet is like um, it's fund 1179, the mm -hmm. county fund, okay, through the years. And then as we get back in the back, it's more on each year what we have done and the grants and donations we've received. <clears throat> We're listening. Keep going. Yeah. Are there any questions? Or does it make sense what I was trying to do? It does. It does. And it seems like you've really grown. And the number of volunteers. Right. The volunteer hours. People don't understand how many are put in out there in the different parks. So how many? Well. I sat yeah. down for quite a while to make a list, and yeah. I came up with like a thousand to fifteen hundred a year. Wow! Uh, wow! Well, it takes a lot to maintain them, and they are really utilized. Right. Because I love Prairie Edge. Any other questions? Or I haven't been out to the. And seeing that uh, update work you done out of your landfill, or, uh, <clears throat> is there a, a golf, frisbee golf out there? Is that we a dog park? Or or or? The dog park is out there, and then just there's four pavilions and <clears throat> trails. I think the plan for this year is we're going to try and develop more trails. That's what people seem to want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Mark Park is <coughs> there. A lot of people use the Mark Park. Are there? Good. Yeah. Good. Most interesting. Thank you for putting sure. this together, Bill. You're welcome. I asked, I asked Bill to put in the volunteer hours this year in that, and I would also mention that maybe a lot of those are put in by Bill. So he is the force behind that mm -hmm. um, and does a tremendous amount of work and is on top of everything out there about what goes on. Uh, 
I guess I, I bring that up because I think there's going to be a time in the future when there is no bill. And, and then what are you going to do? And that's my one. Well, Mark, then you're stepping up because yeah, you've no, retired. No. <laughs> no? Okay. There'll be a time in the future, like you said, 10 years from now, you're not going to be around to see what happens to that abatement. <laughs> I think it's the same thing with us, too. I, I keep saying, and I, I think this long term, we're going to have to hire people. And um, to do some of this maintenance type things somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. and, and I just open that up to let you know that somewhere at some point, we're going to be looking for funding to do those kinds of things. Okay. We do a lot with donations, we do a lot with volunteers, but I just don't see that happening for us. We have been working since probably last summer on updating our five year master plan. Okay. And we sent to DNR for their approval. And very strongly, they came back with a couple things and said, county parks aren't sustainable without county support. That, and that um, means county funding? Is that, that some, what? A point, yeah, what okay. they're saying is, you can't do it forever on grants and donations, which is what we do. Mm -hmm. But we just want to throw it out there so you're thinking about it. That, we're getting old. <laughs> you know, Mark's been there since um, 2000. I've been there since 2003. Um, so it won't be forever. And you're dead. But well, well, your efforts and your dedication is most appreciated because the parks are a joy. Well, thank you. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions for Bill or Mark? Board members. Anyone in the audience? Thank you much. Thank you. Okay, next. And this isn't on your agenda, but Amy, Amy Rowe is going to give us, thank you, an update on hope. yesterday but uh, just a quick update um, Polk County Hope just as a point of reference every two years we put together a strategic plan um, with enough um, activity related to what we heard from our service provider partners and other board members um, to understand what the needs are um, another point of reference which I didn't mention yesterday was the housing initiative that then fostered into the lighted pathways. So that was kind of a project that was on the former plan that has now found a permanent home to try to address um, homelessness and other needs related to housing. So of course that came off but um, of our strategic plan because we felt like that had been addressed through that lighted pathways as well as the housing resource hub activity that FEDCO is working to try to address housing needs. So um, in general, Fulton County Hope's mission is to provide awareness and education related to resource as well as provide pathways to accessing those resources. Um, the ways that we um, look at providing awareness is Facebook. Uh, we've got our website that is completed with a nice new um, uh, brochure that you can thumb through on there and see. Uh, we provide service provider meetings every quarter that anybody is welcome to get a free lunch at. The next one is actually tomorrow at 11.30 at the library. You can come and hear what the needs are, what service providers um, are in the area, be educated and potentially um, help solve problems. We also have the nice brochures um, that we provide as well as a phone number people can call to learn about what's on those brochures. Um, and then we are now um, hoping to knock on wood if we can figure it out tomorrow, figure out how to send out more mass mailings uh, via MailChimp. So, those are some of the providing awareness and education pieces. Um, this specific plan, it talks about what we're hoping to at least research or accomplish in the next two years. If you look at number one and two, um, the time frame on that has changed a little bit based on some feedback um, that we've received. Uh, we are looking at next year, probably either later this fall or starting early in 2025 discussing uh, some topics that we feel are super important related to mental health. Um, 
we tried this concept uh, a few years ago with substance use. Um, I mentioned yesterday, and the young lady uh, was here, uh, related to the increase in suicide in the county. Um, unfortunately, that is a, a fact that has come to our attention. And so um, Becky Clark, who is 4C Health, uh, I don't know, she's got so many titles, I can't tell you what it is, but she is our mental health advisor. She came up with this specific idea. So we'll talk about depression. What is that? And how do you see the signs and what to do um, with somebody who you may feel is depressed? Um, anxiety, seasonal affective disorder, caregiver burnout. Lots of folks are struggling with caregiver burnout. How do you address that? So we'll have a series of conversations related to helping the general public understand what those topics are and resources that they could potentially access to address those so people don't feel alone in that. And then we'll capstone that with a substance use symposium, we're calling it fancy word, but um, the whole point is that we've had a lot of discussion related to how we fostered some of these um, organizations and um, activities to help with addressing substance use in the county, but the feedback that is coming back to us is that there are there's some disjointedness because we, after post-COVID, have different folks attempting to do different things and it would behoove us to really bring people together to try to talk about are we all working together to try to address this are we aligning all of our missions to make sure that we're meeting expectations are we really helping people the way that we feel like we can are we using the right methods so just coming together and figuring out what we can do to most effectively use the resources and the organizations that have been created through conversations so that's one and two, uh, stay tuned for that. We'll probably start planning for those in the summer. Um, number three, it is called Brick and Mortar Wraparound Services. We probably should have changed the name, but we just stole it from a previous um, uh, plan. It really, that is deceiving. When I talked to Wes, I told him that is deceiving. I had gotten a call about that already from somebody. Um, really, that is a different concept of looking at, are we most effectively helping the people that are in the system. We are providing them resources by giving them access to understand how to connect to those resources through brochures or the phone, but are we actually helping them? And so um, we have, the case has been made that we might need some more intentional way of supporting individuals to be able to help themselves to pull out of poverty. Um, I think Chase can test that there's a lot more hands-on activity that needs to be done so we will be going to uh, combined community services in uh, Kosciuszko County in April to research their self-sufficiency program which is a program that walks people along the process to help bring them from whatever they struggle with using the different resources and providing them the opportunity to become self-sufficient so there will be no choices made on that. We're just gonna research and see if that's a good fit for what we're doing here. We don't feel like we are effectively addressing that, so we wanna look at some other options to be more effective. Um, in essence, poor Virgil Smith is almost our caseworker for everybody right now, so we feel like that's not sustainable for the future, so we need to look at uh, what, what does that look like to, to address more effective ways of helping. Um, number four, battered women's shelter. It's been brought to our attention that we have more struggles with domestic violence than we expected. And so um, I am on the board of Beeman Home as a representative for Fulton County because I work in Kosciuszko County. Um, they wanted to understand what the needs were, so have invited us to um, be at their meeting March 15th of uh, this year to present to them what some uh, needs could be so that the board for Beeman Home can do their strategic plan and see if there is a case to be made to provide more services for Fulton County. So I don't know what that will entail, but we will bring uh, you, any of you are invited to come if you would like to. We will be at their board meeting and we will take a tour of their facility and explain to them what our needs are and then they will convene and figure out what that looks like. So. Um, Number five, I kind of talked about right then and there, we're doing that communication method review to see if what we're doing is working. Sometimes Gmail is not our best friend and the emails get kicked back, so we're trying to make sure that if we are to provide awareness and education that the tools we use are actually using, or actually working, which sometimes they don't. Gmail doesn't always work. Um, and then last but not least, number six, uh, service provider fair. 
uh, the county had been so gracious to us to allow us to have a fair around the courthouse square, but we felt like that wasn't really meeting the needs. People weren't coming like we wanted them to, so why kind of waste your time on doing something that doesn't work? So we circled back around and decided to enter an already existing event, um, which makes more sense and is more practical. Um, and so we have a booth at the Nickel Plate in which we are providing our resource guides and also letting anybody ask questions about how they can connect to resources or to other things. So two things that are not on this, and I did call you Wes, so don't say that, I didn't tell you already. Um, <laughs> we have made some progress on the transportation study. We had that on a previous plan, which we did not forward to this plan because we had not heard, um, but we have received back that the um, IUK students, grad students, have created a handcrafted survey for us. I actually will be running from here to Fulton to go present about that to Fulton. Um, and the intention is to take uh, this survey, which will ask all of other elected official community members, anybody who wants to fill it out, what the actual issues are with transportation. Transpo does a survey, but it's only for the riders. So this survey, Doug and I have met multiple times. He wants to really know what the needs are and <coughs> cannot wait to the case to the um, State Department of Transportation if he doesn't have data. So this will help him if he feels like there's a larger need, he can make a case in one of his grant applications to ask for more money to meet those needs. So we will hopefully, Lord willing, be able to get the survey out to all the town boards, the churches, uh, to the partners, service provider partners tomorrow um, and be able to hopefully get good data to make good decisions on whether community members need more transportation opportunities. The other part of it is do employers need more opportunities for um, transportation? So some of the questions are, as an employer, <coughs> would you be missing out on employees because of the lack of transportation? So that's a pretty exciting, so we're working to get that out as soon as possible. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we're working on, trying to uh, help bring some collaborative effort to a subject matter that is difficult, is um, homelessness and warming. So right now, today, it's not a big concern, but at times when it is very cold, how EMA and 911 get lots of calls. So how can we help Gail? Gail called me and said, hey, how can we figure out how to address this, maybe using the network? So we will be hosting a meeting of all the pastors um, on March 4th to ask them to potentially consider how they might be able to help us to address um, collectively the subject of homelessness and the need for potential um, warming stations. We don't know what that looks like. We can't tell anybody what to do, but we're gonna provide them free dinner and ask them to consider. If you have a food emergency, please contact your so, Lots of things on the docket. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything. I did this already once and I'm trying to do it from memory, but any questions or clarifications? I think what I take board members. Um, I have just a couple. How many service provider partners mm -hmm. are involved with all? Yeah, so right now our list, our current list is, I believe, 250. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but that includes schools, churches, as well as service providers. I think the list. And we are actually going to look at that again tomorrow. I think the list of actual service providers is around 80 to 100 of those. Okay. And those are to be qualified on that list um, to receive the email. You have to provide some sort of service to a resident or families in Fulton County. So. Um, okay. And lastly, you stated uh, something about people in the system. Mm -hmm. How many ballpark Fulton County residents are in the system? Uh, that's a good question. I we don't have that number of okay. individuals. Um, the ones when I say that, we are talking about individuals who, instead of pulling themselves out of that poverty mindset, are um, potentially going from resource to resource and really just kind of staying dependent on the resources instead of actually using the resource to give them a platform to 
free themselves out of quote unquote the system. So I hate to use that term because that's very stereotypical, but um, we, Fulton County Hope providing awareness and educational resources, the intent was to help folks to be self-sufficient, not to continue to need resources. Right. Yeah, not that we don't understand that people struggle, but the intention is to provide them a hand up, not a hand out. And right. so we feel like it's great that they can get access to resources, but we're not 100% convinced that we're doing what we intended to, which was help to get people to be settled, have a right. home, be able to provide for the families, you know, do the things that really um, would be self-sustaining. Yes. Yes. So okay. I'd like to give you a perfect number, but I, you know. Thank you much. You're welcome. Anything else? Any other questions, board members? I have uh, just a comment. Uh, I go to the coffee shop every morning and talk to the local about different problems and things. One of the things that I see a lot of that's concerned to a lot of people is uh, these people that are working the system and they have no intention of doing any work and they're out there, believe me, I've, I've met them. And, and you know, I'm, I'm with you on, if you have a genuine need, then I, I don't have a problem with helping you. But if you're just lazy, I think we make it, we don't want to make us uncomfortable, all the lazy people want to come to the town. That's me, that's on me, that's the way I feel. If we, and the key is, just like we were talking, good paying jobs, get the job market uh, accelerated where we got jobs and then okay if you've got uh, mental incapacities we got things in place to take care of that if you've got physical disabilities we got things in place to take care of that but just pure laziness I don't have a lot of tolerance for that and I as far as I'm concerned if they run out of places to go they get a job maybe and, and I'm not trying to come across as not being compassionate because I'll, I'll do anything to help a guy that's down and out, but, but I got to work for a living. We all have, you know, most of us have to work for a living. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, yeah, and I, really, I think it comes to that point of why um, we are research, researching the self-sufficiency program. So there's a book called When Helping Hurts. And so uh, one of the premises is that um, what we feel is that sometimes when you just have these volunteer organizations and though we do our best, Hope County Hope provides a platform for people to meet, but there are some folks who don't want to meet with us. They do things on their own, they don't accept the invitations, they don't come to learn what other people are doing. And so sometimes, in my opinion, that is how people continue to kind of work through and maybe not receive the full help because we're not all on the same page. We can't, we are a nonprofit that providing this service, but we can't force people, can't force service providers to come, we can't force everybody to work together, but we can at least provide maybe a system. So if in the you know course of this with the self-sufficiency, if somebody has someone who's struggling and they continue to go from place to place, then our suggestion would be for them to send them to the location where the self-sufficiency program is and really you know kind of give that accountability to say, hey, we would love to continue to help you, but we feel like it's important to go through this, you know, through this program and, and to do a soft hand up or hand off. We don't want to obviously shame people or you know whatever, but we do we do want to highly encourage them to provide for themselves because if we are making it easy for them to access resources, but we are not then following up with moments of accountability, then we are creating what you're saying, which is kind of a welfare state, which is not the purpose of what we are intending to do. What we're intending to do is to try to make it where people can navigate the system so that they can actually have the ability to get a job on their own and have the joy of buying a home and being able to buy groceries for their family, all the things that um, people who are self-sufficient lives do. So I understand that concern, and that's the hope through that specific. Um, sometimes all these things are buzzwords, so sometimes we get lost in all that. So. And we appreciate all you're doing. Yeah. So, so, so thank you much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Gail, do you have a comment? Yeah. What, 
what Amy and then um, what Randy kind of hit on a little bit on his personal feelings on the matter, March 4th is the perfect time to come to that meeting. Um, some resources have been requested on the county side. We stopped that because on an emergency side, the government can only be responsible for so much. So the county government is not going to pay for those resources. However, these groups come together and request maybe some funding or some support or grants on their end and report back like Hope does. But your other uh, communities uh, that assist the 200 that may come here and you never see them again, Hope is trying to organize that. And I've been doing research on my end because we need to have a suggestion or some help with a solution so they don't come and bombard and ask for money from the taxpayers versus helping on a volunteer basis and with these groups and the grant work that they're doing. So March 4th is the way to stress that and listen to some of these groups that are trying to make that success happen on a low income basis, if to be politically correct. So on that note, on the emergency side, I have to have plans in place for warming and cooling. I know Wes likes to uh, pull those things and likes to post those in the paper, and so does RTC. We record and put those out on WRI. But fact of the matter is the government cannot, on our side as a local government, house and put these things up in our local fire departments. They're for emergency services only. So a suggestion is a, a solution. There is a great faith-based group out of El or Kosciuszko County. And I asked Amy to reach out to him so he could go here and explain how their system works for the accountability and getting these people back into society and like, okay, these groups are helping. Let's get them working back. So we're not seeing them on the law enforcement side again on a numerous basis, but that's what all this she is trying to promote and um, spoke to you about today. So on our side, we're trying to help and suggest. And so this would be a perfect time to see what these groups are all about and when they come to you and ask for the funds on their behalf. And what we do on an emergency side where we have to call it, we have plans in place and that's it. And, and, and again, you're referencing the March 4th meeting? The March 4th and, meeting. And that's for the pastors, and then the meeting tomorrow is for all the service providers. Okay. So we provide a quarterly meeting for every service provider. Okay. And so they, we have two education sessions. I think uh, it'll be the Indiana Department of Health tomorrow, and I'm forgetting who the second one is. And then we're going to have a section about the transportation and other things. One of the challenges, and then I will not take any more time, and I don't know how to address this because it comes back to awareness. My mom was just telling me about another organization from a woman that is well-meaning, God bless her, who didn't understand or know that other organizations were doing things for homelessness. Now she started a whole separate organization to address homelessness. So I don't know how to get the word out because it must be sent like a mailer to everyone's home, but that is anti kind of this productive. The whole reason why Brian Johnson was on the original committee, you know, Jason C, Janet Vance, all of these people when we originally started Hope was everyone felt like people were continuing to bump into each other, ask for resources multiple times for the same thing. So they made the case that an organization bringing people together to talk about it in a collective manner would be helpful. And we are doing our level best to try to use every tool to get the word out that this is available with the frustration, like Gail said, of just, you know, more organizations deciding that they want to address issues that already have been topics of conversation. And it's not that we're trying to boss people. Right. We're just trying to provide efficiency so that people like Gail can do her job well and others. So, Location and time of that meeting, but but that you said for pastors. So the march uh, tomorrow is at the library, the uh, Fulton County Public Library at 11:30. Lunch provided. That is the one for all of the people. If you want to come to the pastors meeting, that is on March 4th at uh, Council on Aging at 6 p.m. Dinner is provided. Where at? Uh, Council on Aging Transpo uh, Community Center, the one right beside the library. Okay. Multiple names. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Gail, thank you for your input. Appreciate it. Okay.
4C system. These agencies have been duplicating services for years. It's been going on for years. It comes back to a root problem. Take care of the drug system because a lot of the homeless don't want to give up their habits. And secondly, get a job. Thank you. Any other comments made by the audience? Thank you. Yes, I know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, department updates. We're going to start with, so I'm going to call him Detective Sergeant Halderman because I don't know him. So he's going to give the sheriff's report um, since, since Travis isn't here. No, Travis is not. And he threw you to the wolves. Sure. <laughs> If you don't know us, you get against us in the Yes, the sheriff and Chief Deputy and my other are sheriff's sure. office. Okay. So that is why you get so you're here. to deal with me. Uh, so basically what he gave me for the uh, his report is, he told me that he already emailed you guys all the month We have before. all the reports. Okay. Uh, he said that there is 90 inmates as of February 19th for the jail. There is 30 Wabash County inmates, 14 federal inmates, and 14 DOC inmates. They, are, they have invoiced $67,000 in January just for house, or inmate housing. And How much? 67000 67000 Yay! Thank you. There has been a total of $551,000 in inmate housing funds since its inception. He went ahead and broke that down. There's 315,000 invoiced for 2013. And if I'm going too fast, the numbers just not There was $385,000 for bond reduction, $82,000 for operation and fund, and $82,000 for maintenance <coughs> that came out of that. Uh, next is Deputy Jay Salantes. He began week eight at the academy down in Plainfield. Uh, he's about halfway complete after this week, so getting excited to have him back. His graduation is going to be April 19th. Uh, Deputy Rick Utter will begin later this week as the school uh, special deputy SRO. So uh, Deputy Scott's going to remain at the school to help train him and get him familiar with all the <laughs> policies and how everything works there. And he's going to stay through the end of the school year. Uh, we just completed written and physical testing for a merit deputy position. That was done on January 3rd. We've since moved on to background checks. There were six people that tested for it. We've moved on with four of the candidates for the background checks. So hopefully that'll get done pretty quick. Uh, AEDs have been deployed to most of the patrol vehicles for the deputies. Uh, we purchased a few and had a couple that were we were able to reallocate from the jail. There was quite a few in there. We don't need them every 20 feet. So we were able to pick and choose a couple from there to help fill in the gap. Uh, two Tahoes have been ordered for 2024. These are going to replace our two Durangos that are used for our canines. They're the oldest that we have in the fleet. They're getting pretty rough need replaced. Uh, we don't have a production date or an estimated time before we can get them. The ordering was only open for four days for 2024. So, had to get in quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last is insurance is settling for the 2016 Ford Taurus that was struck on US 31. Uh, they, I believe they're paying out $9,500, $9,500 for the settlement, minus the $5,000 deductible that insurance is going after the other insurance company 
to make up that difference as well. Uh, and then there's $4,475 will almost cover the equipment we lost in the crash. And that's the equipment such as radios, radar, things, the equipment that was in the vehicle. Okay. So like our insurance don't pay for that, the equipment? That's not covered? Right. I know Travis said that last time. From my understanding, I'm going to have to speak for him. I wasn't part of those conversations. It's typically like a typical accident. We weren't at fault. He got hit on the side of the road. So their insurance is going to, they're just saying we're going to cover this much. Our, excuse me, our insurance will cover so much of it. Then we have our deductible that comes out of that. Whatever's left, our insurance is going to go after the other vehicle's insurance to cover that cost. I mean, will they go after for the equipment cost of the equipment also? Is that yes. Or do we go after? I can only say they're going to try. Yeah. I can't speak for the they're company if they'll get that or not. But yes, they won't be trying for that. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? What's, yeah. <clears throat> what's the full capacity of the jail? As it stands right now, or what we can... What, will you, what would you be able to do as far as housing, how many? I don't have the exact number, but I believe it's around 220 to 230. Well, there you go. We'll throw some of those homeless in there on these cold days. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of it. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you much. Okay. Kathy, anything or observe it? Gail. they're being programmed at this time so we do not have those in our possession for capital assets and I will tell you when the 800s come into Fulton County all the IDs are kept out at uh, EMA uh, communications since I'm a commel for the state they all come to me um, to begin with so um, I have where all those assets are and what happens if they don't get utilized or whatever they get shut off because they are under Fulton County but um, on the sheriff's end, we really don't have that problem because we're always scrambling for that equipment anyway. Derek can tell you that. Um, but uh, once we disperse those five to the fire departments, we'll know if they haven't been keyed or um, being utilized, and I will ask for those back. So they are ran out of the EMA, and then they will be dispersed to those departments. So, And they've all been asking, and we are moving forward with the 800 system on the fire side. So your entire county will finally utilize the full 800 system and the BHF will then become the backup. Good. So that's really all, all on the communication side. So if we move forward to the EMA side, um, I did bring Don Sewell here. She has taken the deputy director's position. Um, this is her first week, right now second week. Um, don't ask her how it's going, no, just kidding. She's doing fine, um, but this is National EMA Week, and I'm not going to be as excited as Jerry. You know, Jerry comes up here and <laughs> does her acrobats and yeah, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, IDHS did interview uh, a few counties. Um, Fulton County was one of them, and it is being shared all over uh, nationally. I did post it on our Facebook page as well. But the thing of it is we have now 20 volunteers. You have a couple of your volunteers here, and that's what makes up uh, EMA and myself. So the time Craig and I took over, Craig was a part of that building team as well. I don't want to you know, leave him out. But um, we did um, upgrade <coughs> quite a bit from where it was at. So 
it shows uh, we were nominated as one of the growing and excelling EMA departments in the state of Indiana and the communication and the uh, building of relationships with our district and uh, being pushed behind being that robust system. So in that area, so yay, we want to thank everybody for their service and, and we what they're doing on a volunteer basis. So it's going to tell the park board, yes, we know how volunteer uh, so, hours work. So, so a question to that point then, we were talking about upgrading. So are you where you want to be then, or do you still have more work to do? We have more or, work to do, but- And I know there's always something more to do, but- Right, so, you know, with the EMS issues that we've had in, in the past, and we're trying to get that contract dialed down, um, and it should be finalized soon, I would hope, because March 1st is that deadline. But moving forward, all of the EMS is now on 800. All law enforcement is on 800 and now the fire departments are getting that momentum. So it is a lot of money uh, when you buy communications equipment. So that five that you're dispersing to each of those departments have helped <coughs> greatly, and they have also purchased on top of that. So like Henry, I'll use Henry Township, I think they bought 15 portable radios. So um, Derek, you can answer this, I think they, uh, all law enforcement you guys use over there is 800, nothing on VHF side. So um, he works part-time over there. So everything is going to where it should be. It's taken a, quite a long time, but um, typical. It is typical. And then the next thing on the books is the 800 paging system for the fire departments because they do have pagers still and depend on those greatly. So we will start trying um, the 800 pagers out for them and getting those programs. So that will be on them, but um, on behalf of the volunteer fire departments, I do know they greatly appreciate um, that because they just don't have the money to operate in those territories. And we depend on them as well. So um, once they get in, I'll let you know, and that adds to our capital asset list and so forth on that note. But um, we did sign a contract, the bill has not, um, come across the table yet. So I know we were deciding where to bring that or take what funds to pay for that, however. But um, we have not got the bill for that because we're just not on here. But, um, I think I will be buying two additional radi radios, but that will come out of probably 901 funds or um, funds that have already been allocated in our budget. So there will be no need to ask for an appropriation, just a blessing on spending that money. But, on that note, that's really all we have in the EMA world. Um, we are needing to upgrade the bathroom to ADA compliance and so forth. I don't, maintenance is gonna have to look at that. Um, there are some things that just need to be in operational um, that are from the 1980s, early 80s, but um, there is some things there and um, and just with all the volunteers and groups and different things, we're, we're gonna have to upgrade that we did put 20 to 25,000 in our budget that was approved for this year, and we'll try to utilize that. And then we do need to replace uh, the doors and windows, so we're going to start with the doors first and, and work our way around that so that the money allocated. But on that note, that's what I see in the future for its expenditures. And then the Ford that we got from the sheriff's department needs to go to the shop because there's some things that are some issues there. But with the price of vehicles, I think we'll see how much it's going to cost to fix it and, and, and work with that. But um, other than that, there should be no expenditures anywhere. I'm already playing. That is all I have unless you have any questions. Any questions for Gail? Any questions for Gail from the audience? Thank you much. You're welcome. <coughs> Rick, anything? Observing. John. One of the Johns. Whoever's going to come up. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Or peachy. I don't have a whole lot uh, other than uh, 
guys have been uh, front brush cutter, they find still down Olson Road lately. Probably seen that. Brush cutter's been down that. We've been uh, run that quite a bit. So brush getting cut and making a pretty good stand with that. Uh, guys have also been cutting trees with RMC and uh, doing a lot of that work. Uh, patching palm stone. Uh, they did start uh, this week on Rule 31 South uh, getting work done on that. We're changing culverts. I think we got about 11 of them in one county tile. We're going to change out under the road uh, getting prep work done a federal aid grant and uh, letting on that in January. We're going to repave that road sometime. I don't know exactly when Teddy Brown's got that project, but uh, it's in the spring, summer. So we're going to be coming up and getting all the good work done for it. So a lot of work going on and making good use out of this nice weather. So Taking advantage of it. Very much so. Don't blame you. Not just sitting around just because it's there's no snow to plow. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Gail was talking about ADA a little bit, uh, but uh, we're in the process of uh, updating the transition plan for ADA in Title VI. Uh, you know, we've uh, sent out a survey to all the department heads and we're compiling that. Uh, on the 29th, uh, we're having training for all the department heads sensitivity and ADA training and then they'll go back to their departments and train their employees so that all the county employees will be updated. Uh, we've done that at least once. What's that? What's sensitivity? Well, so you're not so mean to like Steve. Oh, no. 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 Oh, employees will be compliant with that. Um, but then uh, you know, then March, uh, the transition plan will be drafted and presented to the commissioners and uh, there'll be a public hearing on that and uh, if it needs to be revised in, in April, it will be adopted. Send it to NDOT and the county should be compliant again. So it's done annually? No, it's Last time it was done was in 2012, I believe. So it's been okay. quite, quite a while. Yes. Yes. So it's costing yes. the county a little bit of money to do this. But, okay. Uh, Mandatory if you do federal funding. Yeah. Good boy. Get on it. <laughs> yeah. So we've got till uh, a lot of part of April to have all this done. But there's been a lot of work put into it. Christina Oz, myself, Heather, uh, Redinger, we put a lot of work into this. Okay. Good. Bit to put into it. We should be should be fine. We're on track to get it done for you. Good. Other than that, I really don't have a whole lot to go over with you. I'm not asking for any money. Okay. No, that's good. No, not moving any around. Not not doing anything. Oh, yeah. Just telling you what we're doing. <laughs> any questions or comments for John? Hard numbers. <laughs> Audience, anything for John? Thank you much. I'll ask you next one. Yeah. Oh, okay. You'll wait up for The sensitivity training. Okay, so I think that's all we need. All the department heads. Uh, next, let's see. No ordinances. Minutes. Lots of minutes. All right. First. Group of minutes is uh, the July 18th budget presentation. Assuming everybody's had an opportunity to review it. Are there any questions or comments about the July 18th budget minutes? 
If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Your motion to approve the July 18th budget minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? We're here all night. Nobody's not good. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. I am going to sign and pass. If I didn't get your paper. Okay. The next. Thank you. Next is the minutes from the August 15th budget presentation. Pete was not here, so he can't vote or sign. Has everybody read the August 15th minutes? Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve, Mr. Presented. Lori, motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Randy seconded. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. One, two, three, four, five. In favor. I'm passing and signing. He's not signing that. Next are the August 30th budget presentation minutes. And Randy was not at this meeting, so he won't sign. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve those. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? Sorry. Chase seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries for five you have to sign zero. Next thing you'll sign. So this one is coming to you. Randy is not signing. Next minute, separate, uh, September 12th. Everybody was at this budget presentation. Is there a motion to approve? <coughs> I make a motion we approve minutes as presented. Thank you, Lori. Right. Is there a second? <laughs> who, who seconded it? Steve. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. That's the September 12th. Everyone will sign it. Next is the October 3rd budget presentation. Chase was not present for this. So he is not going to sign or vote. I make a motion we approve those as presented. Laurie moved to approve. Is there a second for the October 3rd? Randy seconded. All in favor, say five, raise your right hand. Motion carries five zero. Steve. Randy. And Chase won't sign that one. Next is the November 6th minutes. This these are the joint uh, the joint commissioner and council minutes from our ES EMS meeting. Everybody was there. Is there a motion to approve? Someone other than Lori. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Chase. Is there a second? Steve seconded. All in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. Very six zero. And the last minutes are from our January 17th council meeting. We were all here. Is there a motion to approve? Let's so move. Randy moved to approve. Is there a second? Sure. No, because of this. On the second? On the 17th? Yes, you were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were here, Chase. Mm -hmm. Who seconded? Right. Pete seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Mm -hmm. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Next is appropriations, and we've got a bunch of them. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I misspoke. First, um, transfers, and we don't sign, we just approve them. 
The first transfer is um, County General to the Annex, um, $7,899.04 from building and repair to furniture, uh, new conference room, table and chairs for the Commissioner's Conference Room in the Annex building. $8,000. Good night, Gerd. <laughs> <She's looking. laughs> is there any discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve this transfer request? Be moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Lori seconded. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. This goes back to you. The last transfer request is. Um, County General for the courthouse from building repair to furniture, $19,165.95. Uh, new conference room tables and chairs for the first floor courthouse conference rooms for the judges and lawyers meeting rooms. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve it. Lori, move to approve. Is there a second? Pete, second. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Carry six zero. Well, that was in Carrie's budget. He's got the money. All right. Carry zero maintenance. Okay. Now a bunch of appropriations, and these are there's a lot of them, and these are just cleaning up. 2023, okay. so it's not hurting anybody's budget from 2023, but this is just taking care of some bookkeeping. I wish I could, but I can't. Okay, um, County Highway Department um, from LRS, $8,590. Is, is there any discussion? Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Steve, move to approve. Is there a second? I second. Lori seconded. All those in favor, signify raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. I'm passing for a signature. Next is um, from Lit PSAP, $2,550. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Lori move to approve. Is there a second? What is that? What is that for? I'm sorry. This is um, 911. 911. Okay. Lori, Lori move to approve. <coughs> Who seconded? I'm sorry. Randy seconded. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. I abstained, Phil. Oh, you did? Yes, you did. I'm sorry. Pete abstained. I didn't look at it. 5 0. Pete abstained. Because his bride. Next is from the Kelly host fee. Who's doing this to us? Mm -hmm. Who's doing this? It must be those darn commissioners. Not today. Me. <laughs> okay. Um, County Host B, this is um, it didn't have nothing to do with $279,536. Uh, Sheriff, $17,299. IT Department, $145,823. IT, $113,613. The Courthouse, $2,802. What was the, I had a share what was the one after that, I'm sorry. I'm trying to write it down. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. So, the sheriff was 278 something. The who sheriff was, was 17,299. Okay, thank you. What was the one after that? Then? There's two, two for the IT. Two, two IT's. IT's. That's two good. IT's. All right. That's good. That's good enough. That's good enough? Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I'd like to. Does it say what they're for? Yeah. Is it just the balance funds or? No, it does not. <laughs> I've got a question. So what is it for? Th this is 
to clean up oh, sorry. Clean, the, clean, clean up <laughs> the book funding and clean up the books for 2023. I know. We're taking so we're taking that amount of money on host fee. The money was already there. It was already budgeted for 2023. There was a banking error. That's what happened. And all the funds. So that was budgeted out of the host fee. Yes. Your own budget out of the host fee. Yes. Forty nine forty six. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. So all the money was there for 2023. We're just moving it back because yes. we get reappropriated for 2024. I just don't like oh. doing appropriations oh. the second month of the year. Just well, through. noted. But it is what it is. Yeah. So we have to we have to move forward. So is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. I okay. think what these are are to get them out the negatives for the year. Yeah. It's just moving it, and it has to be called an additional appropriation. Am I correct? Yes, it's yeah. just the money that was budgeted in the last year. Yeah. And we did take it out. So everyone knows that last claim date for 2023 fell on the 31st. So when we went to process it on the bank, I was unable to do it due to the fact it was the last day of the year. Right. So it pushed the payment to the 2nd of January. Okay. That is all that it is. So this money was already in everyone's budget for 2023 and just wasn't spent, essentially. Right. So it's not a shortfall. No, no it's no, not a shortfall. The money was 100% there. This year, but they it were just got paid in 24 last instead of 23. So I make motion to approve. Okay. <coughs> Lori moves to approve. Is there a second? Is there a second? Jay seconded. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. So there's going to be a lot of these. You guys, we're just going to keep on going. Uh, next is prosecuting attorney, $936. Motion to approve. Who did it? Steve? Who seconded? I'll second. Lori seconded. All those in favor? 6 0. Next is uh, probation department, $230. Motion to approve. Move to approve. Steve, move to approve. Is there a second? Pete seconded. All those in favor? 6 0. Next, probation, uh, $115. Motion to approve. I make motion to approve. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll oh, second. Ren? Or Pete? No, sorry. Ren seconded. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion approved. Uh, 6 0. Next is <coughs> probation. And this is a different fund $195. Motion? I make motion to approve. Lori moved to approve. Second? Pete seconded. All in favor? Raise your right hand. 6 0. Next, uh, Sheriff Firearm Destruction. $339. Third approved. Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? I second. Lori seconded. All those in favor? 6 0. Next, Sheriff Extradition. $17. <laughs> Whoops. I make much with whoops. Sweet's okay. <laughs> so, Lori moved to approve. Steve seconded. All those in favor? 6 0. Next is Coon Cap. $53,399. There a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Randy seconded. All those in favor? Raise your hand. Carries 6 0. Next, the assessor's office, $188. Move to approve. Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Lori seconded. All those in favor? 6 0. Next, um, Community Corrections, $240. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Steve, move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Pete, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. 6-0. Next, out of edit for area plan, $1,726. Is there a motion to approve? So, who was that? Chase? Randy. 
Randy, Randy. Randy moved to approve. Pete seconded. All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries 6 0. Next, out of County General, <coughs> 363,833 dollars. Is there a motion to approve? For what? Um, Just the county general, right? County general, auditor, coroner, prosecuting attorney, county extension, superior court, coroner, sheriff, EMA. Should I keep going? No, it's not okay. Special or a bunch of stuff? A bunch of stuff. <clears throat> so is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Chase seconded. All in favor, signify by raising right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Next is Convention Visitor and Tourism for $16,152. <coughs> is there a motion to approve? Pete moved to approve. Is there a second? Chase okay. seconded. All in favor? Uh, City of Five, raise your right hand. <coughs> Carry 6 0. Next is uh, Lit Correction Rehab $10,446. Is there a motion to approve? I make motion to approve. Yeah. Lori moved to approve. Is there a second? Um, Steve seconded. All in favor? 6 0. So, you guys, the commissioners who shall remain nameless signed in the wrong place. Just keep signing down underneath me. I'm sure I signed it right. <laughs> I said nameless. And here's another nameless signature uh, for reassessment $19,984. Is there a motion to approve? Approve. Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Lori seconded. All in favor? Raise your right hand. 6 0. Good. We're getting close. Next is the recorder's perpetuation <coughs> fund $1,120. Is there a motion to approve? approve? Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? I second. Randy seconded. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries, 6-0. Next is MVH. Uh, $22,521. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve. Lori, to approve. Is there a second? Is there a second, Chase? Yes, I'll second. Chase seconded. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries, 6-0. Next, from uh, Lit Public Safety, $44,142. Is there a motion to approve? I make motion we approve. Laurie moved to approve. Chase, did you second? Yes. Chase seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Raise your right hand. <laughs> they will cooperate. <laughs> They're getting tired. Uh, okay. <laughs> motion carries 6 0. Well, we're almost. Oh my gosh, we're almost done, you guys. Okay, health department, $330. Motion to approve. Steve move to approve. I'll second. Randy seconded. All in favor? Carry 6 0. And I think this is the last of you guys. Park <laughs> non reverting, $902. So what is Park. The park department. Is there a motion to approve? So Steve moved to approve. Pete seconded. All in favor? Carry 6 0. Thank you, the heavens. Okay. I think we're down to old business. Pete, old business. No, ma'am. Randy, old business. No, ma'am. Chase, old business. No, ma'am. Lori, old business. No, I'm good. Steve, old business. Nope, me too. Chantel, old business. Old business. None? Mm. New business. Nope. Pete, Randy. 
No. Chase, new business? No. Lori? New business? No. Steve? Go ahead. Neither were old up, whatever, almost. Thanks, Chantel, for giving our funding agreement for the flag veterans' flags. So we get the ball rolling on that. So, so somebody tell me about it. So explain that to me. So how does that work? Well, so this is going to be for the VFW. Well, is that <coughs> it's going to go to the American Legion every town, the whole thing. Last year, each club brought a bill for their flags, three uh -huh. clubs. Right. And we just cut them each a check. Okay. Um, which that just paid for their flags from last year. The three clubs put out. Okay. <coughs> this year, we, since we budgeted the $2,500. We did. It's all going to go to the American Legion. And they'll disperse. Then they'll get all the flags and all the markers we need. And then just the other two clubs will just kind of get whatever we need. We'll get all the stuff right then. We all work together to do it. Right, anyway. right. And then whatever's left, I mean, plus the city's going to, they budgeted 2500 also last year. Correct. So um, hopefully they'll do kind of the same thing. Whatever's left after we get all the flags, markers for the year, which we get extras for new. As know, needed. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever's left will go into the Fulton County Veterans Honor Guard Fund, pay for fuel, uniforms, just they're Good. expensive because that gets it very expensive also. So Good. that'll help a Good. bunch. Good. Thank you much. Say thanks to Chantel for getting this done so quick. I just talked to her about it last night and she got, already got it for me, so I can get it done here and get it. Thank you. Get a sign, then get it back to the commissioner's next meeting and get the ball rolling. And then it's got to go back to you guys because it's in your budget, correct? It is in our budget. Yeah, yeah so we'll, yes. we'll do it and then send it back to you because it's in your budget, okay? Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. This, okay. Do we have a sign to there or just the commissioner? Just the commissioners. I would like for them to sign it just because it's in your budget. I don't want to spend money out of your budget. Well, like that, I mean, it said on there something about commissioners and council. But I don't know if that's like. If, a whole if that's okay with you guys, I, I think that'd be the way to do it. That's fine. You? That's fine. Okay. So do we need to change this a little bit? No, nope, you're fine. It's just so it's just got. So it goes first. to the commissioners meeting. Commissioners first. That's fine. Oh, why am I asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then once you guys approve it, you'll fire it back to us. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Work. So you got no nothing for us to sign on here. Okay. Okay, and thanks for taking care of this. It's appreciated. Um, the only new business I'll just give you to tell you about money. So, the county's portion of the host fee for October and November last year, our portion, $91,495.27. Say that was just for what month? That's for October and November last year. Three times that is now. <laughs> True. Have you got a total for the host fee? Do I have a total? Yeah, within it. I right think now. it's two, maybe two eight. Okay. Off the top of my head. Yeah. So that's all my new business. Any new business out there? I have a question. Okay. So on the appropriations that you did, I understand what appropriations are in cleaning up from the last claims. I, I get all that. So, um, some of us turn in claims like all week long, you know that Chantel in the week prior, or not right on the date. Is there any way that, because um, we know exactly what was appropriated for our department, so I know what to balance for on my end? Because if, are you wanting to know what I appropriated for your individual, like what? Yeah, the you're the one that for. appropriated, right? It filled yes. out the appropriations. Okay, I'll just email you. Yeah, later. yeah. Do you, did you keep track of any of those claims that you turned in? Because it would just be for the amount of the claims that you turned in that last round of claims. I did, and I tried to keep them separate, okay. 24 and 23. However, I did file those back because... Yeah, just email me and I can... I, I keep can the let you Microsoft know. money running on both ends of the department. Okay, yeah, just email me and I can... Or I will email you tomorrow and I'll let you know what I put on there. Yeah, me. just so I can balance out. Yeah. I'm not looking for that last... Two cents somewhere. Yeah, don't yeah. drive me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what'll happen. Okay. Anything else? Any other new business? Uh, maybe I'll say happy <coughs> birthday to Randy before I ask for um, 
A motion to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? He? There you go. And Chase seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries.